Yo, what's going on? It's twenty four seven TV. Harry shot her in the place. No, no, it's we say in fantasy. Well, no, no appetite. Yeah, I, was, I was trying to hook up my coke for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a bit out, no? No, no. Right, okay. It depends on what kind of coke you're looking coke at. Coca-Cola, Diet Oh, right, okay, you know? you're off the other stuff. Yeah, you're <laughs> joker. Okay, that's uh, a cut. <laughs> yeah, on the real, 24-7 TV, we're in the field in fantasy, Harry shot her. Yo, we've got headaches in the place. What's good? How's everyone doing? All good, man. We've got Blackley in the place. Hi. And do you know what it is? It's like... I was kind of thinking the other week about the role of the DJ. It's always been pivotal to drum and bass. Mm -hmm. And obviously many dance music genres, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I was kind of thinking <coughs> these days, with the DJing, do you have to produce to get somewhere or can you just be a well, sick DJ? That was really. why I, so I thought, let me get a couple of the guys out here. Yeah. But I know these guys are sick DJs, very yeah. individual styles. Seen both of them play, both yeah. do their thing. They're more like turntable wizards. They, they've got their own approach to DJing. It isn't yeah. just the standard thing. So I thought, let's get these guys in. Let's talk about the role of the DJ in 2017. So that's the first question I put to you, Black Dude. I know you started <laughs> off as a DJ not making beats, right? Yeah, I did, mate, yeah. Um, I've been about for about 10 years, but only since the last three or four years, I've really progressed further. Um, I got You get to a certain point being a DJ. Don't get me wrong, you can break through as a DJ. Mm. But for me you can only get to like a certain level. There's only going to be a certain line and you can never cross this line, I feel, yeah. without producing, personally. But yeah. it's, it's, like, it's not to say that you can't be involved in the scene and doing your thing and, and contributing a lot and yeah. not being a producer. Um, but as for marketing yourself as an artist, mm. you can only go so far being a DJ. Um, this is the way I That's feel. Personal experience. Personal yeah. experience, yeah. Because I know you're making sick beats now, man. Yeah, Thank you, mate. On rough tempo the other day, and some Cheers. of the productions. I was like, is that one of yours? He's like, yeah, it's another one of mine. It's <laughs> mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. Did you start as a DJ or as a producer? Which way did it work for you, man? I didn't want to be a DJ like before. Really? Yeah. Like it's I'd... funny you say that because for some people, I think it's a necessity. Yeah. See, that was the thing. It was like the only way to see Headex was to hear Headex through a set. There was mm. no like the SoundCloud presence weren't enough. Right. or the Facebook presence weren't enough mm. like and the only way to get out there was to allow people to hear the music do you know what I mean yeah. rather than right. just kind of putting it online so why didn't you want to be a DJ man I just never was interested in it like it you, sounds you, you don't like the whole what is it I was just you nervous shy? man yeah yeah I was like some, <laughs> that's where there's like two sides of things isn't there? there's always these two sides so it's either like the producer who's just like ah oh, I just want to make music yeah. like and don't even think about performing and then for me it was looking out at like friction down at the Mel Craig in Amsterdam like 10 years ago like yeah. wow this is what I want to do but mm. then if you're never if like if you're not in that position and I didn't even think about making music back then yeah so it's, for me my first thought was oh I want to play on that stage yeah so but then if I look back now like I just want to sit in my room and make music yeah, yeah okay. like yeah, it's yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. how much it changed because <laughs> yeah. since I've been getting into production it's a whole new addiction to because DJing's addictive it yeah. is an addictive feeling like but making something and then seeing people like dancing to that and the yeah. reaction, it brings it to a whole new other level. And especially if you're mixing that yourself mm. and bringing your own music into your DJ sets and before, it's like, it brings it to a whole new level. But I would never have thought about that when I first looked down at Friction all that time ago. Yeah. Just think, oh, I just want to play. Mm. So, so is Friction one of your main inspirations then? Definitely. And Mampy Swift okay. um, and Hype and Andy. But that makes sense. That makes sense because obviously that's what I'm saying about you. I've always known you go in. I always call you like a turntable <laughs> wizard, bro. This guy is different. Like, let me, how many decks do you use normally on a set? Well, we're up What's to six up? now. <laughs> he says now. We're up to he six. Says now. Yeah. Are you pushing it any further? <laughs> to be fair, we're six. <laughs> to be fair, the other day I've got a six-channel mixer and a four-channel mixer. Yeah. And I put up these teasers on them on my uh, like page, DJ Blackley like page. You can mm. head over there on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> Get a flag there. Um, but yeah, and one of the guys, I had both my mixers set up, but normally I hide the four channel mixer and I only have the six channel mixer. And he goes, oh, I see 10 faders there. What are you going to do about it? Mm. As if to say like, and normally it always comes from a challenge. So mm. I think within a, a month or two, you're probably going to see some crazy wow. eight to 10 deck mix thing exclusive there. But um, wow, that's it's, but it's fun. Exclusive, see that? But the thing is, that it's always do fun. you know what? Can we get the exclusive of the actual filming on that? Ooh. That's all we want. We, we make pressure me here, now. Get this guy up here. Yeah. To do it live. I'll, I'll be happy to do it. But like I say, it's all it's all about fun. It's of course, you know, I mean, you just so hit the nail right in the head. It is yeah. all about having yeah, fun, big man. Time. But, I mean, just for the, some of the other guys. I mean, there's probably like younger guys now watching you guys, seeing what you've done. I mean, you've broken through. 
and it's like some people say it's really hard to break through how did you personally break through into the scene headaches what was your route of entry into the scene man i don't know man like i'd say like it came like super quick like even from the beginning uh, if you know jacks he was like playing my stuff he showed it to other people showed it to other people it's all validation in my mm. opinion do you know what i mean when someone validates you it opens yeah. up 10 other people that are going to be interested oh, right. okay. um, yeah, I know what you're saying, yeah. and then just slowly working up i met gov and i've been signed there for like nearly three years now i guess right, okay. and that was it i'd say like the validation of him saying that i was good enough allows other people to yeah. say like yeah okay so, i'm know, gonna it's funny I'm you gonna said, pay when attention. you said about the about the producers i mean i know producers that they if they could earn money by just producing they would quite happily yeah. just sit in the studio and produce because they're like they're at home there. Mm. You know what I mean? They're, they're in their comfort zone, and then you put you put like it's, I've always said this like um, you don't, there's some people that are great like DJs but not so great producers. Yeah. But then there's some great producers that are not that great DJs. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. So it's about trying to have that fine balance. For example. You're probably a better producer than you, admittedly. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Miles. But then, arguably, because of what you do with the six and mad decks, he, you could be arguably a better DJ than you. Yeah, one. Your no, creative technicality. No, but what is I'm what? trying to say is, but that doesn't make any of you. You're no yeah, less yeah, yeah, than him, course, and he's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You both course. bring a different thing to the yeah, table, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is beautiful. That's what the beautiful thing about music. It's beautiful thing about drum and bass. Yeah, is it can take all of these elements, you know, and. You know, and I just think it is a great thing. But mm. it's really interesting you said that about the producer. Yeah, I've you? like it's it's like I'd, I'd say a performer and a DJ are like two different things. Like yeah. I always wanted like I was looking at like Fred V and Graphics and Next Guy, and like without sounding selfish, they were playing like the massive shows, and I wanted that. But I never mm. saw that as just a set. Mm. It was always like when you've got ten thousand people in front of them, they've got all the visuals yeah. and all the angles, all the aspects that they're using is what created it. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to perform rather than just be a DJ. I wanted to create a set list of my own tracks and mm. play that. Right. Obviously, make it unique. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And I've always wanted to kind of do stuff like that, be creative in that sense. Yeah. Um, but then I had to obviously become a DJ, and I love it now because yeah. I'm playing my own music and playing yeah. a lot of it. Um, so it's more of a showcase for your own music. Yeah, that's how I'd r- that's yeah, 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 of course, that's how I'd rather see it, and that's that's what so I do you find not play fun. Play anyone else's tunes? Yeah, so yourself? I still play other people's okay. tunes, but majority of it, I'd say eighty percent is definitely my stuff. Yeah. Mm. Following on from that as well, um, I know we've been ab- abroad a lot of times, and we're in a situation where we have no MC. Mm-hmm. So going back to the performance side of things, um, I know we both do it. Uh, a few other people do it as well. We'll actually grab the mic mm. and try and structure our set to get the people involved still, so it's not just an hour of music, basically. Yeah. But obviously, this has taken years to develop and gain confidence, because yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. MCs. Yeah. We're not Harry Shotters, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, at least we try to be. But <laughs> <laughs> with no bars, basically. <laughs> just, just the energy. But, um, <laughs> but this is what I'm saying, that um, when you first become a DJ, you're never going to think, oh, I might need to grab the mic and, no, and no, actually no. become like the host as well. It's funny It's funny you say that, because um, like I, you know, like I think over the recent years, mm. like with the whole explosion of EDM, you notice that um, DJs are getting more visual. Uh, for me, how I got more visual was UK Apache, ironically enough. Uh, mm. When I used to do stuff with him back in the day, he used to be always like, like signal, signal. He'd be going, come on. And I'd have my head down. And <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, no, no one's oh, looking. You're, you're definitely not a head down DJ. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 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 The way I look at it is, <laughs> you're, if if people can see you enjoying yourself, yeah. it helps them. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like get involved. I always thought that from just the um, just a raver's perspective, watching Nicky Black Market back in the day, yeah. mm. you could always tell Nicky was enjoying every yeah. minute of the set. Yeah. Another man was like this, yeah, yeah. head right. down, yeah. no real connection with the yeah. crowd. A lot so of the they times, DMC, you know a lot of the times you think um, it's because they um, don't want to interact, but a lot of times it's like, I, I remember- I think it's shyness. Yeah, it's shyness yeah. and yeah. just- L- Lack of confidence, yeah. possibly. It's, it's confidence and just yeah. thinking, oh, just, yeah. And then after a while you look up, just just look up yeah, and see the smile. What do you, you think? It's funny you say look right. up, I'm thinking about, you know, people that have laptops in front of them yeah. and they're not, they're completely, to me, I, I mean, I've said this to like Hype, do you not see the laptop as a barrier between you and the crowd? Yeah. And he, he that, disagrees. Actually. Well, it is, it's because but the crowd are there and he's there and he's like obviously oh, that's he's obviously Serato, right? Yeah, he is yeah, a Serato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
and uh, but he didn't. He obviously don't see it as a problem because obviously he needs the the vinyl for, yeah. uh, for, for his uh, skills and all that. But yeah, I, never thought uh, about yeah, that I look at the the laptop as a barrier between. Do you use a laptop? Or you no, I just no, use no, I just use Dex. I think in that in that sense as well, the laptop could be seen as a barrier because it's not normal, is it? Mm. When the mm. DJ turns up, you're expecting them to either put tunes in yeah. or mm. put the USBs in. So using yeah. a laptop might obviously give I off. I suppose off. you wouldn't want the laptop to the side either because it's. Surely it's gonna. Yeah, no, it has area. to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <It's not laughs> really and I think obviously, like the DJs that like to use Serato is because they've still got the vinyl feel. Yeah. yeah. So if you come from that love of vinyl, I, I was you go, talking. Yeah. You, gonna, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I actually see Marky the other day. You know, SW4, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I go to him, bro. When are you gonna modernize, man? And he went, oh no. Nah, he's still on, on vinyls, bro. Still on the on the. But he he sets up like his setup is like amazingly quick, okay. and um. I said to him, like, you're not going to modernise and like go on USBs, and he was like, oh, you don't understand this, the whole feel of it. I'm like, bro, that was then. Yeah. Like, come on, man, get into the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, but like, I bet it's like if I pick up a CDJ and turn it upside down, it's not very really special. No, is it? but I actually, <laughs> I actually, funny enough, said that to him. You can pick up a CDJ. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, so he's, he's, like, he he's, a, he's it. a turntable. He, he weren't having it. it. Yeah, he and you've got obviously you have got your you've got your purists, isn't it? Yeah. Would you guys consider yourself purists or, you, or do you move with the times? I tell you what, I've still got my techniques. Yeah, I've still I got have my vinyls. They're nice so ornaments, man. I've I got think little fl flowers growing out of them. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is the thing on this debate that I have. I really don't have anything to say. Like, I, I, you don't I, know about no, vinyl. No, no, no. These like big record things are you Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> like, I, the, like, they're, they're, they're like ashtrays. Yeah, they're 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 that's what I'm saying. No, they're not seen. Like. And they're not like, I've turned up to venues and kind of looked at them like, why are they there? But yeah. if mm. I'm forgetting the roots, like yeah. that was how it started. Mm. Um, so it is pretty strange. Do you think that's that. important? Like for, you know, like a lot of people get hung up on, on the roots of, you know, where it's all come from. Like, you know, you turned around and said, that earlier on, oh, I've been doing this for ten years, but there might be people out there that have only heard of you like two years ago. Yeah, which is good. That's what that's what I like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> what I mean, that's what I'm saying. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like how important is? It? I always see people like you know like rappers. Mm. Yeah, I've been doing this for ten years deep, and mm. like I don't like you see people seem to want to attach onto it for some reason. I, nah, I, I, I think, think relevance overweighs the time in which you've done it. That's yeah. right, I, I would mm. agree with that. I, th I think, you You're know, a very intelligent young man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet if you took those glasses off, you'd be I, look, really, I just you'd removed be like, the Harry uh, Potter aspect <laughs> of myself. Like, yeah, and it's like, hmm. uh, relevance, relevance over the time you've been in the game, definitely. I mean, yeah. obviously over time, you do learn things as well. Yeah. There is something to be said for having 10 years yeah. in the game, a lot of experience. You bring that to the table. Don't get me wrong, you, you always want to seem fresh and new, yeah. mm. but obviously experience is, is key, yeah. like I feel, mm. to the scene mm. and knowing like how to um, hold yourself down on social networks and just... I was going to talk about this yeah. because obviously we're talking more about the sort of the creative side of DJing mm. and production yeah. at all the important. moment. What about the marketing side of it as a is, DJ? Is, is this look at him smiling, look, 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 he's a, this guy. You're a bit, of a, <laughs> yeah. a bit of a social media guy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for, for social media, like for me, my view on it is like being creative. Like I try mm. to give them what they want. I remember like a year or so ago, I put up a... a snapchat and ask people what they wanted and they just said they wanted to see me like it wasn't because mm. it's always like without sounding bad like it's stale to just put event photos up now mm. like if you think about it like we've had social media for a long time now in in the sense of three years that's three years of seeing the same <laughs> content like and right. everyone's doing it like yeah, yeah, yeah. and now especially as in 2017 people even say about music being throwaway and there's no shelf life to it mm. but it's the same in content like things die out mm. um like flyers for example people people don't look at flyers anymore they scroll mm. past it like mm. everyone does it yeah. it's like spam now yeah, yeah. everyone yet yeah. argues exactly. about like where they're placed on the fly that no one reads yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's um yeah. but, <laughs> but in that sense it's like things change i think especially with content as well and the growth of that is is something that i think will keep an artist relevant mm, definitely, definitely. So what do you do that's different though bro? what do you do that's different from the standard kind of event photos and stuff just give some of the guys a little example because essentially i use my different uh platforms for different things mm. so rather than just being like i'm gonna put this flyer on facebook this flyer, flyer on instagram and this flyer on snapchat and just say oh that's gonna get the most reach but it's not mm. the content is what creates the reach and the mm. content is what creates the growth of of the artist mm. so it w might be all well and good putting it on every platform and mm. thinking that's right, but if mm. the photo gets no likes, then the algorithm doesn't allow people to see it. That's just yeah. how it works. Yeah. Um, so like simple things like using a photo of me, just of my face, chilling, like 
just normal every day. But then catch me here tonight. More people are gonna see it, more people are gonna like it, yeah. more people are gonna take it in. It's just another way to show them information without selling it to mm. them. Because yeah. everyone's it's like, funny, come buy well, tickets it's for It's funny this. you say that, because I, I literally posted something yesterday, mm. and on Instagram it went a bit, you know like when you post on one, it kind of goes to all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to undo that, because what I noticed is on Instagram it went mental, uh -huh. and on Facebook, which you would normally go mental, Nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I actually shared it from Instagram. Exactly. Well, but Instagram and Facebook are owned by the same people. Yeah. yeah. So they they are they yeah. are similar. <laughs> they are yeah. similar. Yeah. It's not exactly the same. I think Instagram is more of like a personal look purely because mm. you take yeah. the um, essentially you was meant to take the photo on the Instagram app. It yeah. was meant to be like rugged and rough. Yeah. Um, whereas Facebook is a lot more programmed. Yeah. Um, so with things like that, they're different types of content will work better on yeah. different types of platforms okay. definitely yeah, yeah man yeah. definitely well, like like you got your head around this bro yeah, yeah. i know yeah. listen uh, trust me he's a yeah, don yeah. say he's, thank uh, you headaches give me a lot of advice on social media as well yeah um and yeah that's what, sorry let me interrupt that's what i love one of the many things i love about you you don't he doesn't get gather this information and try to hold it nah. he's quite happy to yeah you know, he actually helps artists with their social media pages Wicked. you know what i mean and trust me there wouldn't be too many people be doing that so nah. i've got to like applaud you for that yeah, that's that's, you, a, that's a really great thank you. i think i think like, we'll insert it there. the, the <laughs> secrets the secrets are like this is the way i see it same in entrepreneurs as well like so many people work so long to find like the little the little diamonds and they keep them to themselves but mm. the pie is big enough for everyone Possibly. like it mm. really is yeah, like yeah even like promo and together works for both people because there's more activity if someone's yeah. got 1000 and they've got 2000 that means that those 2000 people that like that might see this yeah mm. um so well, that's working why when together you've done videos of like when you've took little clips of our tunes we yeah just yes yeah yeah line and added yeah. him and you know so what it is is he's reaching our audience that's yeah. it do you yeah. know yeah. what i mean and, and then you're sharing yeah you're growing yeah. the yeah. scene yeah. and then we can all eat more because exactly more there's exactly. more people coming to the exactly. events so we can charge more exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like, you know. honestly harry does it for free it's, just, it's a persona yeah it's, he does it's it for the love hey, i'll tell you something man like in terms of sort of competing you know we've got like you two guys here today obviously you're saying you, you've, you've helped out black in certain things you've probably given him some advice yeah, and stuff 100%. as well it's a two-way situation you, is, is djing still really competitive are you competing with the next man is it how do you see that because i know with MCing, it's very competitive but it's friendly competition it isn't really there's no real beef but man had really man are really trying to kill each other on sets yeah. Yeah. i don't <laughs> i don't want to like um section it too much but like we do it we all do it full time this is our job this yeah. is our lives yeah. kind of yeah. thing i think when you're in this kind of situation the pr the pressure of competition of actually thinking oh he's better than me or mm. oh he's, he's not not as good as me or i'm better than him or i want to be better than him Does that kind of leaves no it kind of totally leaves and yeah. it's it's more about your own growth as an artist yeah. and then when you see someone it's it's always seen just mutual respect yeah, but yeah. then i feel when you're when you're striving to get to where we're blessed to be mm. I feel it's, it is a lot more competitive in, that, yeah, yeah. in, in, a, that in a domain. I don't want to section it like that, but it is yeah. because all these people are fighting for the dream mm. and, and doing, and I remember being in a position where you don't know, you're going to wake up the next day, you're going to go to work, but you're going to come home and you're going to like work so like till the 2 a.m. in the morning on tunes or mixes and you're going to keep on doing it until you get to the position where you you've blessfully don't have to work anymore. Mm. But until you're in that position, you're always going to be looking What's he doing? Oh, how's he doing his mixes? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. like, yeah, what's so getting this really reaction? But no, but strange. it's crazy how that pressure just totally leaves when you feel that you're in a comfortable, uh, comfortable position as an artist. Yeah. But it's, that's it's for yourself. It's funny you say that. See, I don't, for me, I don't, it's quite weird, but I don't view, I don't say, I don't view anybody as a rival or whatever. No, you know, no, when I first no. like met you, and I see, remember, I, you know, I see a couple of things what you're doing, and I found you. This is like, it. That's I was what I was like, about oh, to listen, say. Oh, listen, I think you should do this, that, and the other. And you. He was the first person to do that, and I took it in. I was like, and then within two weeks later, I rang you back. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but the best thing was, he phoned me back and he went, Did you know this? And I was like, Wicked. So I gave him a bit of information. Oh, yeah, yeah. He that. took that and actually then fed me back some information. Mm. I was like, Right, I never knew that. Yeah, actually. But that's I what I'm saying. That. We, we I did, you know, I'm looking at this guy thinking, This guy's sick, and mm. like, you know, Obviously, I've spoken to you as well. Yeah. You know, I, I highly rate you as well. You know Thank what I mean? You. And the thing is, I just think that it's good for our industry to have people. Like, now you to a set, mm. you need to find, where's the next Black League? Mm. Where's the next Headaches? We want, we need to find that because that's what's going to keep this thing growing, keep yeah. it thriving. Yeah, I, hear that. I, th yeah. I think, like, the, with, on the comp 
like competition and trying to be better than someone else like I've never wanted to be number one like that's the problem is when you're at the top you're always going to fall that's just how it works mm. like you can't stay number one forever someone's yeah. going to come on and make the new bass patch yeah. or have the best compression on their snare I think like my goal has always just been to better myself like mm. create content that was mm. better than yesterday create a song that was better than the last mm. or be nicer than what I was yesterday because yeah. I think that package all together will grow you cool. yeah. I yeah. think as well I strongly believe as well that we're all set out to do something do you know what I mean mm. and if I'm not meant to be the best then I'm not mm. but yeah. as long as yeah, I tried yeah, 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 yeah as yeah, long yeah. as I tried and I knew that I was doing the maximum I could within my body, mm. then that's all that I care yeah. about. Like, I mm. just don't want to be lazy within myself. Yeah. This is it. Like, mm. I don't, I, there's so many other people that are better than me um, and that are not in the same position as me. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Mm. So, there's so, is, there's, there's so many people that could easily come to where I am any day and, mm. and completely take me out of where I am purely because it wasn't their time then, but mm. it could be now. Yeah. Do yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? That, no, but what but advice would you give to the sort of we got obviously a lot of aspiring DJs watching this right yeah. now. Let's um both. I'm gonna ask both of you that question actually. Let's start with Blackley. What advice would you give to them for upcoming DJs? Yeah, like people who are just hungry, bro. Um, so they, they see what you're doing. They see now. What I like is you see now it can happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your headache is blowing up. You're blowing up. Yeah, there's a lot of so DJs doing their things. Don't so get me how wrong. How do you how do you get there, man? How do they get there? Well, in the world of the of the social media, like I was talking earlier, it's it's vital to be in the eyes of people in the scene so basically you need to do something because shock value these days so you really no, need no 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 nudes on not that much shock Jeez, we don't want no shock like horror. screens cracking and stuff but <laughs> seriously like so like what i say with the six deck mixes and stuff it yeah. started out as a bit of fun but people took that and it was like well like, i've never seen this before and they seem to go a bit more viral than yeah. say like a normal mix that mm. i would do like mm. on a weekly radio show yeah. they're short their impact so a lot of the times if you've doing something and it dra drags on for too long people are going to be like yeah it was good and it's gone on a bit and then but if you've done something that's impacting it's like over full of it like wow mm. and then all of a sudden they're sharing it and then it it's all about kind of like i say being different but staying true to your roots. Mm. So if you're going to do something with a really old school track that people will know and then revitalise it and do something crazy with some new stuff, then you're going to get people from the older generation of drum and bass in the new generation of drum and bass all liking this thing. And before you know it, you've got people knowing your name from, say, people that you've looked up to. So I had Mampy Swift. I'd done some crazy um, how many tracks in an hour thing that we started as a, oh, yeah, as a joke. But, yeah. but now it turned into, it's like a world record now. So it's like mm. on a uh, record. Is it an official Yeah, record? well, not with a Guinness, but with the record set. Well, well, we actually approached Guinness and they said they can't um, adjudicate it because they haven't got anybody that f physically knows what they're doing. So like in oh, this, like they can't okay. physically say, like, what are the rules and stuff. But there's a few other ones that have... Um, accepted it but yeah what i was saying the back to the point um mampy swift actually saw that and he actually tweeted me like whoa this bloody crazy guy he's a robot check out his mix yeah. uh, and for me i was like oh, it's mampy swift like yeah. he's tweeted about me and like for me so this is the example that i'm talking about of getting in people's like vision mm. and like and obviously because i was obviously doing something that he's known for like crazy mixing it obviously mm. appealed to him yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. for him to like, reach out and and tweet me is like so obviously we've got a good connection now but mm. it started from mm just a mix that I mm. just did out of fun, didn't think anybody was mm. gonna like, I obviously was doing it because I'd love to do it, but to get like acceptance from the people you look up to, mm. like Headex was saying with Gov with his tracks. So for me, mm. it was more of the DJ and mm. Mampy, Mampy Swift. Swift. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like, sense, yeah, so definitely. this is what I'm saying. So it's kind of like, it's a lot easier said than done. And it's not something that I forced to do, but like I say, it's just, you need to be different these days. Yeah. Like, Headache's the same, like, people have seen the same stuff over and over now. Yeah, they yeah, want to yeah. see something new. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. No, I hear that. Um, so, what would you say to these My, guys? like, top advice, and, like, this is quite brutal, is, like, stop trying to sell people things. Like, it's about their attention. You can monetize views now. It's not all, like, it's about, like, selling most EPs and releasing a single all the time or releasing five, six EPs a year. Just work on you. Like, work mm. on developing you as a brand, like... Don't just look into, I need to make this tune that sounds like this person, mm -hmm. or I need to post like this person because he's done this mm -hmm. and he's done that. Because as I said, it's stale. Like it's all about the user now and their attention on you. If you get the likes, that's them physically double tapping their screen and doing it. Of like that's, and if you get a lot of those, that's a lot of eyes watching you. Yeah. And it's free to like now, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? So, and, and people still don't do it. And that's what I would, advise is that work on building 
your likability, work on building yourself. Your work likability on is a good point as well. Yeah, yeah. because the like connection with yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. it's not it like it's not as it used to be. Like, obviously, I wasn't around then, but I I can imagine there was no social media before. A mm. big DJ was known by their tunes. Mm. Now nowadays, you see them on the Instagram. Everyone's got Instagram, whether mm. they use it in the same professional way or not. Mm. Everyone's got Facebook, and your face is there. Everyone has a personal profile. Everyone mm. has a fan page. If you work into implementing the human side of yourself into just your brand rather than just saying here's my new tune yeah. here's where you can catch so robotic do, saying, yeah. but the thing is, do you not do you not think that's very really interesting what you're saying but do you not think that i mean i <laughs> i actually stopped reading certain people's like twitters because they were bringing maybe a bit too much of themselves like, yeah oh, i agree fuck's sake, oh, me missus pissed me off <laughs> <laughs> yeah see this Come is on, this like, is the thing yeah you, yeah, you, you, yeah. you can't like, you can't just go in and be like Oh, um, I've had the worst day ever. Because who yeah. wants to look at no, someone that's had a bad yeah. day? No, that's that's about being and that shit can spread real easy. Yeah, and yeah. it gives you a bad view. It's like when you put a bad tune out, and you, if you turn off two thousand fans, mm. then that's two thousand people. But remember, that ain't music is is subjective. Yeah, yeah? of course. Because like, you know, if I see someone go, "Oh, this tune's shit," and I'll be like, "Why? What have you done? Let yeah. me hear yeah. your tune." Because yeah, yeah. I know that actually, I might not be able to play that tune, but that's not shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's just not my cup of tea yeah, yeah. but yeah, like it's not shit yeah yeah, it, yeah you know yeah. like but so if you notice that if you was like going back to different genres of drum and bass like would you ever see someone in liquid say to someone else that tune was shit they'd be like oh it's good but it's not really my thing mm. like or it's just not really my thing or do you know well, what i mean they'll never really do say you know what? why mm. say anything yeah just but if you like, like it like, play it if you don't don't play yeah. it yeah but then it's like i think more like upfront dance for music people are so much more brutal yeah. and i think yeah. i just i've all it's just something yeah, that's, that's funny you say opinions. that there's <laughs> funny you say do you think right coming from your generation do you have you ever like looked at like sort of the generations before you and wondered why drum and bass has never been like a mainstream music you ever thought about that yeah and what, what what have you thought? Why would you think it has not been that? Like, honestly, I think, like, the professionalism of, like, the whole thing, like, the branding, like, the light shows, all of that isn't isn't accessible to, like, 15,000 people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, if you look at Rampage, for example, the whole light show is there. Amazing. Mm. But if you just had the booth and mm. the decks yeah. it would and just be 15,000 like people, <laughs> yeah. it would be boring. Yeah, you, yeah, like, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. even be able to control 15,000 yeah. people with just that. Like, yeah. you need... And that's why all the big festivals have it. And I think that plays a part, yeah. Yeah. definitely. I think presentation yeah. is a massive part of it, yeah. But does that... like? Because I remember uh, I, was, uh, I did an interview for uh, Rinse FM, Genius, uh -huh. and he said something to me really interesting. I know, you know when someone says something to you and you never really look at it like that before? Yeah. And he turned around and he goes to me, he asked me that question. Uh -huh. Why do you think jungle with, you know, jungle was like a massive movement back in the day. Why did it never go to that next level? And I went, oh, I don't know, I never really thought about it because I didn't really think about it. And he felt, um, he felt that the reason that jungle is pretty much the only British music made in England, exported worldwide, um, that is still around today, mm. whether it's small or yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah. still around. Mm. Yeah, and there's still big people like Uncle Doug's, yeah. Jumper Jack Frost. There's still mm. people that are doing Kenny Ken, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And still the thing is, the world, they're man. still traveling the world doing this, right? But he kind of thought that the fact that it was so badly organized and so badly ran was what has kept it alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, wow, my head just went, poof, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it is an interesting yeah, argument. Anyway. So there's like an argument of why is it not gone? to where it should have really gone. Because there's some amazing artists within, mm. that have come out of drum and bass. What they've, what I always remember X-Man saying once, you know, it's, we might as well call it like stepping stone because everyone uses drum and bass as mm. a platform, become massive and then just go mm. off and do other things. You know mm. what I mean? Which was like, mm, okay. I think I think the future's bright, man. I think I think yeah. gentlemen like these two guys here, and there's other people out there as well, are really like, pushing yeah, it. Are great in terms of the branding, there. in yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. the skills, and there's so many different layers to it and levels to it, man. And I think these guys are going to inspire the next generation. Yeah. Because what I love about drum and bass now, even just if I take the MC inside of it, people are breaking through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen what Ezra and Grimer are doing. There's other guys now underneath them yeah. that hopefully are going to take. So it, when yeah. you see people like yourself, you almost become role models, bro. Yeah. So it's people who can it's see mad. it can yeah, be done. Yeah. Well, this is it because I do create DMB, which is like radio, label, and events. But the whole sole purpose of it is to bring in upcoming people. Mm. 
a lot of them are making music, so they send it to me and I'm training them like, yeah, you need to do this, you need to do that. Mm. But the idea is to develop the artist, so in five years' time, they're, s they're sitting here at YouTube mm. and yeah. Harry Shot and Fantasy yeah. giving interviews. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Course, so that's always look at the bigger picture of things and like you have to be that kind of person to want to do it naturally yeah. mm. do you know what I mean? yeah. and if you're not that type of person then it's not right for you do you know what no, I mean? exactly. but both of you are that kind of people you mm. know like you know that's 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 why we got you up here because we want Thank we want so people much, yeah. sure. we want people to see that you know that it can happen like you don't need to be an arsehole you mm -hmm. can be lovely people <laughs> yeah. no do you know what i mean but get, and yeah and up. still get there yeah, and have yeah, a real yeah. fan base not yeah. not just because you happen to know someone that's got you on a lineup no, actually like real fans yeah, that are yeah. asking can I see this person or yeah. why is this or uh, as what happened with you on Skibber's birthday I couldn't believe it what, people outside kicking off because he was on the first set oh really yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or, fans, what, yeah. what's going on really? and I was I actually was like wow not responsible for any virus <laughs> 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 no they were kicking off they were like oh, fucking hell, I want to get I want to see him innit yeah they were I like well, I've got to come to see Blackley and I'm like ah oh, hmm, don't even have an after party yeah. to play again <laughs> But you know oh, what, guys, I want to thank you both for coming up today. Yeah, it's been great right. to get your no, perspective on things, yeah. man. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, maybe we do a part two, maybe based more on the production next time. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe get someone good. else in and we'll have a chat. Because I think it's, dialogue is always healthy, man. Of course. Yeah, especially you know when saying? it's in conversation. It's nice to just yeah. let it roll off the tongue. Let yeah. everyone of course, say what man. they really want to. And um, what's up? You're going back to the studio now? Yeah, just keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, <that's, laughs> I indeed. bought a laptop just yesterday. finished my new studio. So. Oh, wicked, yeah, wicked. wicked. So, Love yeah, that. that'll be open for DJ lessons and production lessons soon as well, people. Oh, actually, that's cool. So, like, have you, you, I know you, do you do tutorials? Like, Turno does. Turno, Turno does. Turno yeah. does, yeah. Do you do some as well? No, I have a bad internet connection, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't. So I, I, I would do love live to. streaming, like yeah, I do to online tutorials. Yeah, and... so I did like a, I found a way to like put the the um, the computer into my phone and stream it like that, but oh, it just yeah, wasn't yeah, as okay. good as possible. Do you oh, know what right, I mean? Okay. I always wanted to. So just before we that. bounce, cool. um, what you got coming out? Um, the next release for me is Raise Your Lighter featuring Stars and Deezer, two MCs that I highly rate. Shout out to them. Shout out to Stars and Deezer. That'll be coming on Create DMB. That's wicked. end of September. All right, Wicked. Excellent. Yourself? Um, I'm working on the album. Wicked. Which Sick. is taken a long time, but I'm working on it. Um, and just loads of other little cool stuff that's coming with HeadX merch. Um, we'll watch out, man. We'll watch out, yeah, man. fresh merch. Actually, I dropped that the other day. That's going on sale. I'll grab that for you. All right, yeah, we're going to sign out. Big respect to these guys for coming in 24-7 TV. Signing out.